U.S. President Joe Biden made the call to climate action, and Canada's Prime Minister responded. Our new climate target for 2030 is to reduce our 2005 emission levels by 40 to 45 percent. The previous target was to cut emissions by 30 percent and to do that by the end of this decade. Canada is now on track to blow past our old target of 30 percent reduction below 2005 levels. But some critics say Canadian governments have a history of setting targets but never hitting them. Others say the targets are not ambitious enough. In any event, many experts say hitting the new targets is possible. I mean, I think it's going to be tough. It is ambitious. But it will require a radical overhaul of Western Canada's energy sector. It's going to be a transition. Everybody recognizes that. And, uh, and we need to get to the point where we're not combusting carbon. That, that's what net zero means. You've got to get to a point where you're not combusting carbon as a source of energy. But Wilkinson conceded that his government has yet to come up with the detailed plan to meet the new targets Trudeau announced at the summit. We will need to continue to do work over the coming nine years, um, which remain between now and 2030. There certainly are areas where we believe that we can continue to accelerate progress. Some potential ideas, a massive home retrofit program to plug energy leaks, a complete change to Canada's transportation supply chain, and the creation of new kinds of energy industries. The two natural resource wild cards would be hydrogen and biofuels, second generation biofuels. Um, you know, is there potential for exports from Canada? But all agree, whatever plan the government tables to meet its new ambition to quickly cut emissions, it will cost billions. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa. Canada's greenhouse gas emissions represent only about 1.6 percent of the global picture. And President Biden, who said America represents about 15 percent of the world's emissions, made the case that no nation can solve this crisis on their own. The other big emitters, China and India, both heavily dependent on coal, did not commit to new targets today. But as Jackson Prosco reports, their hands may be forced by the economic realities of climate change and an emerging demand for green products. Outside the White House, activists dropped a pile of manure to signal their dissatisfaction with the new U.S. emissions targets. Not ambitious enough, they say. The United States isn't waiting. We are resolving to take action. Inside, President Joe Biden found a virtual audience thrilled by America's return. There can be no doubt about um, the world needing your contribution if we really want to fulfill our ambitious goal. Four years ago, there was global dismay after President Donald Trump withdrew from the Paris Accord. Entering into an agreement that disadvantages the United States. Today, experts believe Biden's climate goals are well insulated from future shifts in the political winds. Our companies, our citizens, our states, our cities are moving forward, making, making the opponents increasingly um, kind of the, the anomaly. In part because money talks. U.S. climate goals are now wrapped up in the global race to own the green economy. There are opportunities here, economic opportunities here, for whoever takes climate change and its solutions the most seriously. That sets up potential cooperation and competition between the U.S. and China, the world's manufacturing powerhouse and largest greenhouse gas emitter. China has so far shied away from near-term emissions targets, but says it aims to be carbon neutral by 2060, 10 years after Biden's goal for the U.S. What tethers us together with Chinese energy transition and re emissions reductions is the fact that they're basically servicing our appetite for emissions. Biden's bet seems to be there will be no alternative but for China and the rest of the world to act far sooner because the costs of not would simply be too high. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington.